Okay, good morning. Uh, we just decided the, the final will be in the final week. Because eh? everybody, it's not easy to find a good time and place for everybody uh, in, the, in, in the middle of the semester. So we are going to do the final in the final week as scheduled in the university. So you check the schedule. I believe it's in this room and the time you can check. Right? And I will give you a review before the final week. Uh, so it's on Tuesday before the final week. So I will email, uh, try to email everybody and let you know you need to meet here. Isn't the Tuesday before the final week like Thanksgiving? So it's going to be for December? I will check later. The final week is on the December. Okay, today we are going to discuss uh, <coughs> some other interest, interesting things. Eh? The first one is uh, the capacitor, and the second topic today is uh, inductor. So first one, uh, before we already discuss the resistance, eh? today we are focus on capacitor. So what is a capacitor? Capacitors are one of the fundamental passive components. What does Passive means. Passive means it cannot supply power by itself. It can only store power or dissipate the power, but it cannot give you power active. So that's called passive device. Uh, resistors are also passive. Inductors are also passive. But uh, some operational amplifiers that you will uh, learn in a later time will be an uh, active device. In its most basic form, it is composed of two conductive plates separated by an insulating dielectric. Right? The diagram is here. And we have two conductive plates, usually parallel, and this, this, in some sense, and separated by an uh, insulating dielectric uh, material. Uh, this line is said in the most uh, basic form. But uh, in general, any two conductors separated by some medium can be considered as a, a conductor. Uh, sorry, capacitor. Eh? Like uh, you and me, separated by some distance. And we two form a capacitor. Your finger touch the screen. <laughs> eh? Before, for the tablet, we have a capacitive screen. You touch the screen, you form a conduct, conduct, uh, capacitor. So this value will give the software or the device to recognize which number you, 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 you click. Eh? Some are resistive, some are capacitive. Uh, I believe, if I remember it's correct, uh, capacitive is uh, more responsive or better than the uh, resistive. Uh, so most of the touch screen right now are capacitive. When you touch this, you form a capacitor. So the value will change, then the device will know which position you touch. So wait a minute. Now, I'm listening about the, on the touch screen, the capacitor screen means that it's, it's being done by that small change in uh, motion, basically by touching it, it pushes down and may cause it to... Uh, maybe connect. some are just put it down, uh, some like sensitive, sense, uh, the pressure sensitive, but uh, some are just uh, because of the capacitance. Right? There are some conductors uh, under the screen, you close to it, right? touch it, you form a capacitor. How does touching it do that? Like the because there is a conductor and, the, and you are a conductor, right? Like this one, two fingers, you form together like this, separated by the glass or something, so that is a capacitor. So I said, any conductors separated by some distance can be considered as a <laughs> capacitor. So there's a capacitance in between. Okay? Questions? Uh, for PCB board, eh, so you know that uh, 
your computer, your tablet, everything has a PC board inside, and there are lots of tracks made of copper or even better, like silver or gold. The most the, uh, gold, okay? And this, if they separated by some distance, they form a capacitor. So for higher frequency design, there are a lot of capacitive uh, effects inside the PCB. So the idea is, um, uh, is different than low frequency or DC design. Uh, that's very complicated. Uh, so you usually you need to use a special software to, to design or to analyze the circuit. Uh, so the, all those are because of the capacitive effect or capacitance. Uh, but in this class, again, we discuss uh, only the uh, simplest uh, form like this, uh, separated by two uh, two parallel plate, conductive plate separated by uh, dielectric material. So that is it. Right? And uh, how this uh, capacitor uh, work? Uh, we have these two parallel capacitors. And at the beginning, that means uncharged. And on each plate, we have an equal quantity of positive and negative signs. So that's why it's neutral. Right? So we have negative, positive, negative, positive on both. Same thing. Now, uh, this is uncharged. If you connect to a battery, try to charge this capacitor. And the positive here connect to this side, negative connect to this side, then we know the electrons which are negative, will be attracted to this positive, so electrons will go this way, and uh, pass this way, electrons will go that way. Then after the some time, that is uh, what is going to be formed. Okay? So all the, on the left-hand side, we have all positive left. On the right-hand side, we have all the electrons. Okay? Right now, if we disconnect the battery, <coughs> This kind of battery, those charges, positive and negative, are still there. So this forms a capacitor. It's called a charge of the capacitor. Uh, you don't want to do that. Eh? It's better if the voltage is very high. Eh? If you touch, use your fingers touch like that, what will happen? If you touch like this, you form a conductor, a closed loop, right? This is just like a battery. If you do this, just like you you have battery, right? You, you connect the positive and negative. If it's an AA battery, that's fine. You connect like this, still good, but you're discharging the battery. But for ba large batteries like your car battery, or even high voltage, you do not want to try that. Uh, you need to know what you are doing before. Take a big capacitor, plug it to a wall, and plug it somewhere. Yeah, that, that is uh, kind of used as an uh, electric power. So the energy is stored inside, right? <laughs> Uh, any question on this? Okay. Once the source is removed, uh, we still have this. So a, pa a capacitor with stored charge can act as a temporary battery. Temporary battery means uh, once you connect, like uh, as I said, okay, you use your fingers to connect positive or negative. Uh, then if you form a closed loop, then the charge is, uh, the capacitor will be discharged. Um, so that is uh, like a, a battery. Uh, you have a car, right? You may have the, the video camera. Who has the video camera for that? Uh, now, okay, you have a video camera. So when you buy that uh, camera, you may want to know what is how that uh, power supply. Some has batteries inside. Some has uh, capacitors inside. Right? If you have a battery, uh, the good news is uh, even you discharge from your car battery. It can still hold the charge, so every configuration is still there. Right? The bad news is uh, if the sun is very uh, bright, it's very hot inside, that battery may explode. Yeah. Uh, so that is not safe. So that is the bad disadvantage for battery power. For capacitor power, uh, uh, because it's temporary battery, so the whole the charge is not that long. And if you stop your car to not charge your camera for like three days or one week, then next time you turn on, okay, everything is uh, reset because no power. And so that is sometimes this is also a really big uh, The good news is the capacitor is very safe. Even the temperature is very high, you won't uh, 
have uh, exposure. 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 So that is, uh, you, you, you will see the difference, right? If you are in a very hot area, you want to use a capacitor. If you want to get a uh, tall uh, area, then you can use a battery. Uh, capacitors have a uh, capacitance. Right? So how capacitance is determined? The capacitance is defined as the ratio of the charge to the voltage. I recall how we form a capacitor. capacitor we have the charge, the voltage, right? We have weight to charge the capacitor. Then we are going to have a charge Q formed on the two plates. They are equal quantity, but opposite sign. So the C, the capacitance, is uh, defined by the number of Q divided by the number of uh, voltage. Uh, so that's it. The unit of Q is a uh, <coughs> The unit of V, voltage is a uh, V, right? It's a volt. So the voltage of C is a uh, column per volt. We give this name. It's called a uh, Farad. Uh, you may need to read the textbook uh, uh, to see the, some details. It's F A R A D E Y. Uh, but Faraday is a very large unit. <coughs> Usually, we are, you could use a micro Faraday, mu f, <coughs> or even pico Faraday, pf. Um, again, just like the Ohm's law, right? So, okay, c equals q over v, and q will be equals c v. Uh, if we know the c, if we know the v, then we can calculate the charge accumulated on each plate. Uh, I believe we have an example here. If a 22 micro F capacitor is connected to a 10 volt source, the charge is uh, 10. 10? Oh, oh. 2.2, what is the unit? <laughs> You multiply, okay, so C equals 22 micro, or V equals 10, so that multiply together will be 220 micro, 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 micro coulombs, right? All right? 220 micro coulombs. Does that make sense? All right, so that is the result. Right, so 220 micro C. Right. Yeah. Right. How to memorize these formulas? Q equals CV. Right. There's another here. Over over Imagine over. you store some rubber bands in a bottle <coughs> nearly full. Yeah. You could store more rubber bands like the charge of all Q. Right. The number of rubber bands is seen as Q here. In a big bottle, bigger. The volume is bigger means the capacitance is bigger means C is larger. Right? Or if you push them in more, push harder, that means the voltage is large or V is large. So that's why the number of band will be equal to the, uh, the volume of the bottle, then in some sense multiply by the pressure. Right? So this is Q equals C. Right? But anyway, memorize this. Right? You don't have any op other options. Right? What is C? C equals a C equals a what? Q, Q over V. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Repeat this three times and then you remember. That's, that's Q equals C. Uh, we know capacitor is an uh, energy storing device. Uh, let me ask this. How about the resistor? Can resistor store energy? No. Eh? That's good. good. Eh? No. The Capacitor can, uh, sorry, the resistor can only dissipate the energy. Eh? You pass through a current through, uh, you pass a current through the resistor, the resistor will hot. So dissipate the energy, but it won't store energy. You disconnect, there's no energy, there's no current or energy stored in the, uh, in, that, uh, in the resistor. But capacitor is uh, opposite. It can store energy. So how much energy is stored in the capacitor? Uh, the formula is that the stored energy equals half C times V squared.
uh, C is the capacitance in Faraday, not micro. Uh, keep in mind, we use the, unit, the standard unit. V is in volt, and the W is in joules. Right? Uh, there's no example here, but let's try example. Suppose you have a, a capacitor, the capacitor equals, uh, let me see, uh, one micro. Right? You connect to your car battery, the voltage equals 12. Mm -hmm. And after the long time you charge, how much energy is stored in the capacitor? One micro. One micro is the C. Uh -huh. Then the voltage equals 12. Mm -hmm. So how, how many? So V is squared, right? 12 squared equals 144. Then you need to divide it by 2, which equals 72. 72 times 1 micro. So it equals 72 micro, micro group, right? So very little. You can see that's why it's called temporary. Right. We know the physical structure of uh, uh, the simple capacitor, two parallel plates separated by distance. That means we know the area of each plate. Uh, here we consider a very simple one, just the plate are exactly the same. That means we have the same area. And the distance is D, then how much is the capacitance? How can we calculate the capacitance with this uh, physical structure? Right. The C equals uh, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. <coughs> then multiply by the relative dielectric constant. Epsilon R. We know the permittivity mu R last time, right? Okay, this is very similar to that. So it is epsilon uh, R is defined as uh, the dielectric constant of that material divided by the dielectric constant in the free space or in the vacuum. And in the vacuum, what is this? It's called epsilon zero. What is epsilon zero? equals 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. What is mu zero? That is the last, last time. What is the permeability in free space? Mu zero. What is it? 4 pi times uh, 10 to the negative 7, right? Okay. And this one also, this uh, constant, you better memorize this, all right? So that's uh, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. So that is epsilon zero. Then multiply by uh, relative epsilon r, relative dielectric constant, that gives us the um, dielectric constant in that material. Then multiply by the A, which is the area of each plate. <coughs> Don't use two, each one. Then divided by the distance between the two plates, the parallel plate. Uh, we use all unit. We use all standard units for each variable. Right? A is uh, square meters, D is a uh, meter, and uh, then the C will be fair. Okay? Uh, how do we have an example here? <coughs> okay. Find the capacitance of uh, 4.0 centimeter diameter sensor immersed in oil if the plates are separated by 0 0.25 millimeter. And we know the relative dielectric constant equals 4.0 for oil. Right? The two plates separated by this distance and the <coughs> unit pen, they are oil. So the oil, epsilon r equals 4.0. So what is the capacitance? Can you calculate? Everybody? If you don't calculate, you use the paper right to the formulas. Each plate is a, a circle, right? The diameter equals 4.0 centimeter. 4.0 centimeter. Like a what? quarter? Much larger than a quarter, right? Okay, calculate the capacitance.
C equals what? What's the formula? Q. 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, then times A, then divided by D, right? What is A? A is the area of each plate. So here is the plate is looks like a 4.0 centimeter diameter circle. So what is the area for that circle? 0.25. No, that's the distance. And how to calculate the area for a circle? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. What is r here? Two. R equals two centimeter. So we are going to use a two times ten to the negative two, right? So or zero point zero two. Everybody see here? here? So the r equals zero point zero two. Square then times the pi. What is pi? 3.14, right? Okay, then divided by question? What's on the wall? Okay, right on the wall. Okay. Uh, the C equals 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 times the area, right? then divided by the distance. That is the formula. And uh, A equals a pi times r squared. This r equals a half of the diameter. And the diameter equals 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2 meter. Because it's a 4 centimeter. Then divide by 2, so that's why y equals a 0 0.02. Right? This. And the pi equals 3.14. We can use only 3. Did it? Make sense? Yeah. So A equals 3.14 times 0 0.02 squared. And D here, D equals 25, 0.25 millimeter. So what is D equals? What is D should be used? What number is D? Zero point two five. That's it. We use a standard unit. That is mm. It's not the standard. So M two point zero. Uh, zero point two five. Zero point zero 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 two five. Right. Oh, for me. Yeah. Three zeros. Right. Okay. Oh, you just multiply by negative three. Eh? E, uh, 10 to the negative 3. So this is D. You need to use the right numbers, otherwise you get the wrong result. Yep. Eh? Otherwise you get this. What is the unit for this C? For, oh, unit. The unit is uh, Faraday, right? Yeah. F. F E R E E Y. And this one, will be one Faraday will be equals uh, 10 to the 6 micro F. Eh? Or you can use a PF. How much? How much is PF is this? 10 to the 9. 10 to the 9? Wait, 9 or 12. Oh, that is in the first cell. Wait, so P, pico, negative what? Pico is negative 9. 9. Are you sure? 12. 9 and 12. Alright, that is negative 12. Pico, right? Nano is negative 9. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we use a pico, so negative 12. Uh, usually the capacitance is very small, so the, usually the, the typical unit is micro <coughs> or micro F or PF. Right? The result equals this and this. Make sure you plug into the correct numbers. Right? This looks easy, but you may not get to the point. So the plate area is pi r squared, pi times 0 0.02. Uh, I believe that square is supposed to be outside the parentheses, right? Make sense? Uh, I believe this is wrong, right? This is square is supposed to be outside the parentheses. 
Then uh, equals 1.26 x times 10 to the negative 3. You know, I hope this number is correct. Uh, 4 times 3. Yes, this number is correct. And the distance is uh, 0 0.25 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, you do not forget this negative 10 to the negative 3. Then C equals this, this, this. And finally, equals 178 PF. 178 PF means uh, how large is this in F? Uh, let me, let me, let's review a little bit. Convert this one into a standard unit F. <coughs> equals what? Standard unit F. So it's point. This one equals how many F? It's a scientific notation. 1.78 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Negative 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 1.78 times negative 10, not yeah. negative, yeah. not, not 14, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You go the wrong, wrong direction. Yeah. 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 You see this one? This one is a larger number. You make this 1.78 smaller, so the, the, the power must be positive. Positive 2. And this one is negative 12, or so plus 2 equals negative 10. Right? It's good? In the final, all these things will, will be together, so you need to memorize this. In the final, will be a community, so everything will be covered. Right now, we discuss uh, different conventional types. Uh, I don't think we need to discuss here, right? So everything is very straightforward. You can just read the textbook. But anyway, uh, make up. Capacitors are small uh, with high working voltage. The voltage is very large, and the working voltage is the voltage limit that cannot be exceeded. Uh, if you exceed this voltage, then it will be destroyed. Uh, uh, you have uh, like uh, a lot of appliances at home. There are a lot of capacitors. Sometimes it will be damaged. If you look at the this is trouble footing, right? If you look at the capacitor, it will be like uh, much fatter. Right? So this is uh, inside it explode a little bit, not that. Uh, yeah. But it's uh, like a bigger than yours, that will be the top, right? So this. Next one, this one is a ceram uh, ceramic disc. Uh, these are small, non-polarized capacitor. What does non-polarized mean? That means when you connect to the circuit, you can this way or that way. There's no positive negative, it's not polarized. Uh, they have relatively high capacitance due to the high uh, relative dielectric constant. <coughs> so inside the dielectric constant is very large, so the C is not. Uh, another type is a plastic film capacitors. Uh, they are very small uh, and non-polarized also. They have relatively high capacitance due to the larger plate, plate area. So <coughs> what are the plate area here? What is the area here? The area is um, five r squared. Anyone can, yeah, anyone can describe the physical structure for, for this? Cylinder. Round. It's round, right? Okay, the round. So what, where are the two parallel plates? Shell. Okay, like the shell, right? Yeah. So what they do is, uh, they have two pieces of plate. Uh, suppose two pieces of paper, one is here, another one is here. These two are parallel, right? It's so very long. Right? So this is the width like this. Uh, okay, so this is the width like this. This is this here. But this side is very long. You have two parallel, and in between you put some insulation, uh, insulating material with the electric constant. Then now, you just roll this together. Oh. Okay, roll this together, so you can see all this. So what is the area of the two parallel plates? 
It's very long, right? Yeah. What is the shape of this two plate? Rectangle, right? Just like this, right? Yeah. Rectangle. And the width of the rectangle is uh, the length of here, right? What is the length of the rectangle? It will be all of this, uh, no matter how many turns, extend to, to one direction. Eh? Does that make sense, everybody? So that's why it says, eh? uh, it's a larger plate area. The area actually is very large. If you, eh, you can, you can play with one, right? Uh, destroy it, and then you can see this is very long. <laughs> Any question on this? <laughs> so the cabinet is relatively large. The next one is the electrolytic, electrolytic uh, type. Uh, we have uh, two types, one is like AL, other one is uh, TA, <coughs> uh, it looks like this. Uh, this one is uh, both are very typical. They are polarized. What does that mean? That means they have positive and negative terminals. Uh, when you use this, you, need, you cannot uh, actually connect the circuit. You need to make sure the positive connect to the positive, the negative connect to the negative. Uh, for this, you're going to see a lot of this uh, in the labs. They are, the color usually are uh, yellow, uh, some are uh, uh, brown or something. Uh, the one is longer, one is shorter. The longer one, so you can see the positive. Sometimes this is positive, sometimes the outside they mark the uh, negative. You, but anyway, you are going to see it. Uh, so this is positive, this is negative. The diagram, if you read a uh, uh, circuit the diagram, the symbol is look like this. Looks like this. So this is positive, means the longer one. This is negative, means the shorter one. They connect like this. They mark by positive and negative. So this is polarized. And you cannot switch the, the, the orientation. Otherwise, you're going to damage it. And this one is the same thing. Looks like they have the same length, but uh, uh, they marked clearly positive and negative. Yeah. Okay? <coughs> Uh, any question on this? No question, right? This is very simple. Right? Okay, the next one is called the variable capacitor. Variable capacitors typically have small capacitance, but the capacitance can be uh, can be changed by uh, physically change this or electrically change this. If we can physically change this, usually we are going to use screwdriver to turn this. Like this, just like the resistor, right? So you know that. And uh, some can be changed uh, by electric uh, voltage or current or electric signal. That is called a director. Right? And that is very useful. We are going to use this uh, later time in uh, communication uh, courses. Right? Uh, how to read the capacitor, the label? Right? So like this, uh, the electrolytic. 47 micro F. This one is 0 0.022. Uh, what does that mean? That means it's still like a micro, uh, micro, uh, micro F. If only some numbers like 103 or 104. Uh, 103 means uh, 103, so 10 and 3. So the first two digit is 10, the last digit is 3. So 10 times 10 to the power of 3. The last one is the power, the first one is the two significant digits. <coughs> so that means it equals 10,000. The unit is the pico, right? PF. 104 means uh, 10 times 10 to the negative 4 uh, PF. Some are marked like uh, 330, mm. uh, 6800, then all the units will be just uh, uh, PF. Right? Example. What is the first one? What's the value of the first one? 200. What's the value of the second one? 200. Right, the second one is very straightforward. It's 2200. Zero, zero. Yeah. What's the unit? Yeah. PF. What's the first one? Same. Same? Same? Yeah. Everybody got it? Same? Mm -hmm. 
So this is two two. That is the significant digit. The next, the last two is the power ten to the two. So that's a two two. Then followed by two zeros. Every these two are the same. Okay. For three digit, the the third digit is the power. Uh, the first two digits are the are the number. Okay, both are two two zero zero people. Okay, now we discuss single capacitor. In the circuit, you are going to use more. Uh, so we connect the capacitors. How we connect the capacitors? How many different type of connections can you imagine? Hmm? Parallel, series. Parallel series and uh, combination, right? right? So let's see. Do you still remember how to? Uh, what is the total value of a series uh, resistance? Plus. Add up together. Parallel? It's uh, one over one. One over, one over everything add up together, right? Okay, good. How do you measure this capacitance? For example, C1, C2, C3. Uh, we have different C's. They per, uh, in series. Plus, just like a resistance, right? Okay, it's so opposite. All right? So just try to trick you, let you memorize this. All right? So the capacitance is opposite to the resistance. All right? If you have a capacitance in a series, you need to consider them like a resistance in parallel. If several capacitors are connected in parallel, you need to consider them like a resistance in a series. Does that make sense? So I tricked you at the first time, so you need to memorize. Don't let me trick that again. Right? Uh, okay, so those look at this formula first. Don't look at the, the text, you only look at the formula. Are this C1, C2, C3, or CT are in parallel or in series? Series. In series. It looks like in parallel or in resistance, right? But they are in series in bulk capacitor. Right? Good, perfect. So the total capacitor of the two. If I give you two, for example, one is ten and another is ten, they are in series. What is the total? Five. Okay, okay. Everybody get that? Five? Ten and ten in series. Yeah. Hello? What is ten and ten in, in, in series? Eh? Listen to this. Okay? You have time to read this after class. So ten and ten in series, five. five eh? Don't be confused. This will be in the test. Yeah. And so this one is 1 over 1 over C plus 1 over 1 over C2. Or you can use the product divided by the sum. So that is the only applied for you. Use the product over sum. Alright, now example here. Everybody do this. These two obviously are in, par uh, in series. One is 0 0.001 micro, another one is five, uh, 800 pico. Oh. What is the total? <laughs> uh, what is step one? If I move the yeah. one, over this way. You need to convert the unit to the same, right? Yeah. So which one you want to convert? So we convert uh, the small number, uh, the, the micro into a pico, right? Yeah. It's 1,800. So the first one is 1,000, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody get that? The first one is 1,000 P. PF, the second one is 800 P. So yeah. 100, 1,800. These two in a series. What is it? Uh, 1,800. Yeah. So you thousand. get tricks again. Don't do it. Don't say it. It's one of my things. It's not right. Huh? It's one. It's one over. One over C1 plus one over C1. This is two. So easier just the product over the sum, right? Everybody try this. Is Here, we try it together. This time you test, test. you homework, you try it by yourself. Is it 444? It is smaller than the smallest one, right? Everybody got that? Yeah. Or you believe you get this, right? Yeah. 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 
I, yeah, parallel, that's the loop line trivial, we don't need to do it, right? In parallel, just the opposite. So in parallel, you add up together, right? Also parallel. So parallel, this one is just add all of them together. Uh, example. Now tell me what's the result. 1,800. 1,800. Yeah. Oh, it's 1.8 mil. Micro, right? Yeah. One point eight. Micro. Right? 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 Oh, no, no, sorry. 0.2. Okay. It's 1.8. Yeah. 1.8 nanos. NF, right? Any question on that? It's easy, right? <laughs> so, all of this is uh, to resist. You need only memory. <coughs> okay, now. Anyone can explain why you in a series it looks like in parallel. Uh, you need a like in parallel. What that means if you have more capacitors connecting in series, the, the why the value will be smaller? Yeah. Yeah. So because, because the pole is right? Because you have the positive charge yeah. being drawn from one side and the negative being drawn to the other. So in series, you're connecting negative to a positive side. So it's going to diminish the charge. Yeah, so, so because we know the formula how to calculate the capacitance, right? Yeah, yeah. Why the capacitance will look smaller? One and one, in series, the total is smaller than any of this. Why? Yeah, yeah that's it, I explained. From the formula, the formula C equals 8.85 times 10 to negative 12, then times A over D, right? We assume all the area are the same. Oh, yeah. Now you connect to the series, what happens to the distance? Looks like. You said positive, negative, cancel, positive, negative, cancel. Okay, you have only positive in this side, negative on this side. How about the distance? The distance looks like increasing, right? Yeah. Does it make sense? Right, so we have one here, one here, one here, one here. Okay, I use two, I use three, right? Suppose they are polarized positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, right? negative, negative, like this. Right? Suppose this in a series is equivalent to like this. Yeah. And this cancel, this cancel, if we pack the very close, right? Similar to this. So the area still the same. Make this one look the same, right? But the distance longer, right? Yeah. C equals 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 times A over D. <laughs> this A is constant. And the D this d equals this d plus this d plus this d. Similar to this. So this d increases, so that's why c decreases. So you add more, I cannot say add more, you, you add more in series, then <coughs> the uh, capacitor will be smaller and smaller. Yeah. Make sense? Right. Then parallel are the same thing, right? Yeah. Using the same idea to explain this. In parallel, yeah, lines like this, Another one, like this, parallel then means you need to connect to the same uh, voltage, for example, like this one. This is in parallel, right? Mm -hmm. Then you look like, the, okay, the distance keeps the same, but the area of the plate increases. Mm -hmm. So that's why the C will be uh, the addition for all of them. Okay, capacitor. Everybody knows what capacitor is? <coughs> Tell me in general, what capacitor? Storage charge. Storage charge. We have a lot of uh, uh, things to say about capacitor. Okay, so energy. Two plates. Two, plate, two conductors separated. Right? We have a lot of capacitors inside this room, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you show me one? <coughs> Right? Why is it between you and me, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Why is it between you and me also, right? Yeah. So there are a lot. 
This is called a multi capacitance system. If you have multiple in conductance, each one they form a capacitance. So that's very complicated. Okay. Uh, dielectric. Dielectric is just an uh, insulating that means that it does not conduct. Yeah. Uh, Faraday, what is the Faraday? The unit of the, the unit of uh, uh, capacitance. Uh, this unit is small or is large? Very large. Unit. Very large. So that's why we usually do not use this. Yeah. Instead, we use a micro or, or PQ. <laughs> RC time constant, okay, we don't discuss this. This one will be discussed in 110. Uh, capacity of reactions. Uh, again, we do not want to discuss a lot of things. This one we will in 111. Instant power. Uh, I believe we mentioned this. What is instant power? Instant power means the power at that time uh, instant. Yeah. So it's a function of time, it's just at that time. Uh, compared, contrast to instant power, we are going to have an average power over some time or like this. So this is instant power. The instant power is very large, doesn't mean the total power is large. For example, if you have a micro EM like a guns, the power can be gigawatt. How large is gigawatt? What is the typical uh, power in your of appliance in your home? Uh, Not the heater, milliwatt. Huh? Kilowatt, right? Milliwatt, you have a milliwatt? <laughs> what device, what, what appliance do you have for megawatt? I have something else. <laughs> okay. So kilowatt, right? For example, the hair dryer is like about 1.5 kilowatt. Okay, your, uh, microwave is like uh, one kilowatt or around that, so it's kilowatt. So, for example, microwave weapon uh, can be like a more than a gigawatt or even higher. But this only lasts for very short time, in the, for example, nanosecond, picosecond. So the total energy discharge is not necessarily as large as your uh, hair dryer or your microwave oven. But the power is very large. Uh, like the laser, right? Laser. Power is very, uh, very long. Also. Okay, so this is the difference between instantaneous power and the the average power or something. True power and the reactive power. We won't discuss this. This one will be ET four sixty one or maybe ET one even. We are the same thing. Volt ampere uh, ampere reactive. Okay, now, okay, first of uh, all, the capacitance of a capacitor will be larger if the area of the capacitance of a capacitor will be larger if the capacitor will increase. C. 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 Mm -hmm. You put your phone back, right? Uh, I remind you of the syllabus, right? If you have a phone, then. Alright? How about the A? No. Will be decreased, right? Yeah. How about the B? Uh, makes no sense. No. Makes no sense? Air isn't a good conductor. The air, the air, air is a dielectric way. constant of air is very close to a yeah. vacuum. So that means that the epsilon R is 1. Yeah. All others will usually will be larger than one. For example, oil equals four, right? Yeah, yeah. So this one is also opposite. Decrease. Will decrease, right? Okay. Decrease. Three is good. The area, the larger the area, the larger the capacitance. <coughs> and D. So the answer is C, right? Yeah. Next one. The major advantage for maker capacitor over others is uh, uh, that's a lot of effect. So D. 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 Of the bar, they are polarized. Uh, they are not polarized, right? Not polarized. Oh. Uh, so the voltage rating is very high. Yeah. Uh, this one looks like we discussed this. Yeah, uh, so exactly. D, they have a large uh, available capacitance, maybe not. Okay. B is correct. Yeah. The electrolytic capacitors are used for in applications where a precise value is 
uh, uh, low leakage. They have a large leakage current. Yeah, B is no, see. and they are not accurate. Right? They are see. not precise. So A is no. See. A large capacitance. Okay, that is true. They do have large And they do have a relatively large, large yeah. capacitance. C is correct. A is good, right? This one. In series with another one, so the what is the total? If a something something in a series with oh, Jesus, <coughs> 15, 15, 15,000 plus 6,000, 21.8,000. Are you sure about that? Are you sure this is serious? Yeah. Okay. Is this is serious. I think B. B. Yeah. That's your guess, right? Yeah. Oh, it's B. Right? Can you can you explain how you guessed it? Because it's less than a series, and then you have to take into account by that one on top of one. It must be smaller than the smallest, right? Yeah, right. right. So the first one equals uh, how much is the first one? Fifteen thousand. The second one is 68, uh, 6 .8, so, uh, B or A, right? Uh, the next one, the last one is... Uh, the last one is huge. Uh, the last one is 12, right? The last one two, uh, looks like an add-up again, in parallel. Okay, so D is gone, uh, C is gone, so only A and B. Yeah, so D is uh, better, right? So A is uh, like too small, okay. But you still need to... Oh, numbers verify this one, but that's very good, <coughs> very good guess. I agree with you. I mean, next two capacitors that are initially uncharged and connected in series with the DC source compared to the large capacitor, the small capacitor will be all. <coughs> Compared to the large capacitor, the small capacitor will have more charge. More charge. No, wait, the same. Series. Series. Okay. Series. 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 Huh? Yeah, they're both initially uncharged. <coughs> and they're in the series. Uh, your answer is correct, but your reasoning <laughs> is not that. Uh, you know, I can give you, for example, parallel. The uncharged and the start charged at the same time, but they are different. They just become one. Because they are in a series, right? Yeah. Yeah. Remember the diagram for the charging process. All the current must flow in a series. So if there's one charge past this plate, then the other plate also must be the same. So that's why they have the same thing. Does that make sense? Because they are in parallel. The electrons must all go across the closed loop. So, so if, it's, if it's in parallel, then the smaller capacity will have bigger charge? Uh, let me see if we have parallel problem for this. Okay. Uh, if uh, connected in parallel, the voltage will be the same, right? Yeah. Because in parallel, the voltage will be the same. The Q equals uh, C times V. Yeah. So V is the same. So the smaller the C, the smaller the Q. So larger capacitor. Larger capacitor has a lot a more charge, right? Okay. Make sense? This one, when a capacitor is connected through a resistor, oh, this one is the, the RC circuit, so I said we do not discuss this. This one is, a, is for the last one here, uh, RC time constant. The tau equals R times C. It's not in, we don't discuss in this part. When a capacitor is connected through a series, okay, same thing. All right, capacitive reactions of this one, it is the one over omega C, but uh, we don't discuss that. So I will for this one, plus the capacitor, the voltage will be again. Okay? That's too much, huh? But it's two hour class. A switch capacitor, mu, 
emulate uh, switch to compare to a small capacitor or not? I don't know what this or is. Or resistant? Or resistant? I would say. I believe it will be C. That's my guess. Huh? That's what I. That's what my guess. That's your thing. Okay, who agrees with me? I think. Why? Okay, let's discuss this something. Okay, there's some uh, um, techniques that we we cannot learn from textbook. Why you guess like this? Because like the okay. pressure just seems like a battery to begin with. So. Okay. In a way. So. Yeah. So that is why we mentioned it before, right? <laughs> Suppose this one is in the test. We never mentioned this. How are you going to? Have the best guess, so that is the uh, dimension of the correct. Or when you buy the computer, the battery, the, 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 the source, what kind of source is that? Switch it or some source, right? So I believe that is the battery. So I'll, let's hope this is the correct. Let's see. Right? We'll see, right? We'll see. 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 I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. man. Give me a message. I didn't say it with D. I don't know. Okay. You read the textbook. Okay. You must be in the textbook. Hands me to the D. I don't know. Sorry for you. Sorry for me. Emulate the resistor. Huh? Yep. That just trips me up. Oh, this man must be related to the RC. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, so, you don't need to Alright? We are halfway, we haven't done yet. Uh, this one is the convention, the next one is the induction. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next chapter, 11. Uh, that's why we combine these two chapters together, that's why there are some contents we, we cannot discuss. And we only discuss the fundamental, this fundamental electron. Like in right. inductors, right. we are very familiar with the capacitors. So inductors are almost the, uh, very easy to understand. Inductors like this, we have coils, then this is the inductor. What is a capacitor? Two parallel plates, put it like this, then that's a capacitor. In, just the coil. Right? In general, any single conductor it can be considered as an inductor. What about a wait, so what about a transformer? Transformer? And so we, we discuss transformer next chapter, right? So what I said? Anyone can repeat? Yeah, I'm asking what what I just said. Okay, any two separated conductors can be considered as a capacitor, right? That's what we mentioned before. Any single inductor uh, conductor can be considered as a inductor. If you have a wire like this. Is this a uh, inductor? Yeah. This is a single in conductor. Yes, it is. How do you make the, the, the inductance uh, the inductance larger? You make this coil because it's longer. Yeah. So that's why it looks like this, uh, because uh, in the same volume, the small space, this one is much <coughs> longer. Uh, so and so that's the inductance is uh, much larger than a single like this one. But this part, if you cut here, this man is a inductor. Again, in the PCB board, there are a lot of tracks, right? So that tracks alone is a, can be considered as an inductor. Oh. Especially for very high frequencies, for example. Our cell phone works in what frequency? Working frequency for our cell phones. I know you like cell phones, so what is the frequency? <coughs> the frequency? Uh -huh. uh, no. Close to a gigahertz, right? So it's very large. Oh, sorry. Four so, it's, uh, so it's very large, right? So in that case, or even higher, for example, micro uh, communication, 
uh, millimeter wave communication, communication with satellite or something, the frequency is even higher, then even a single piece of metal can be con need to be considered as enough. Uh, again, we don't we discuss this, this uh, give you uh, my idea. Okay, so, okay, so this one is, uh, there's a magnetic core inside this coil. The magnetic core, what's the purpose for this one? Put this one here. Okay, to increase the, the inductance, right? Why you want to put uh, like a dielectric material inside this two parallel plate to make C larger, right? That's epsilon R is larger than one, so you make it larger. This is the same thing. You put it here, mu R is larger, so the inductance will be larger than without this uh, magnetic core. Right? If you get remove this magnetic core, this still uh, Inductance, but the inductance will be small. Anyone seen the inside, have seen the inside of your radio? Uh, radio, usually, for example, AM radio or FM radio. Uh, usually, AM radio, there's a, there's a like, magnetic core like this long, usually, uh, and there are coils on inside, so that's exactly like this. Uh, this form an inductance. Uh, for this law, okay, that is in electromagnetics. We do, we mentioned this a little bit, right? But uh, I don't want to uh, bother you with a lot of details here. For right? this law, the amount of voltage induced in the coil is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic field with respect to the coil. Uh, uh, Lenz's law, all this uh, will be discussed in physics 2. two. And uh, I don't believe we should discuss a lot of things here. But uh, please read the textbook, uh, at least the once, to get some uh, ideas. In case in the, in the test, in the final, give you something, must be very simple, but you need to know, understand the concept. Uh, not necessarily how to calculate this, but uh, the concept. Uh, here we have a basic law demonstrating Lenz's law. Yeah. Okay, practical inductors. Practical inductors like this. Uh, inductors have winding resistance due to. So if you can see that coil, because the wire is very long, right? If the wire is very long, in addition to the inductance, we are going to also have a resistance. We still have, remember how to calculate the resistance. The resistance equals a, the diameter of the The resistance R equals a, I give you a wire like this, right? There's a cross section here, there's a length, there's A here. How to calculate the resistance? There's a A. Is A on the top or on the bottom? On top. The larger the A, if the A is large, means the thick, huh? the wire is very thick. The resistance yeah, will be large or small? Larger resistance. Smaller resistance. Smaller resistance. Oh, right? more space to move. Okay. Yeah, so more space given the current can pass through. Yeah. Uh, so easier, right? All right? So this A will be on the bottom. The longer the length, the longer the wire, yeah, the larger the resistance. <coughs> And there's a resistivity. Resistivity is a row here, right? And the lot of the resistivity uh, depends on different material. For example, which one has the smallest? Smallest? Which one has the smallest? This one? No. A, a typical, or at least a little bit typical? Silver. Silver? Right? Yeah, silver is this small. Even better than silver? Gold. Gold. Right? If you do high frequency communication, for example, use a waveguide or something, all inside, they coat it with gold. Yeah. Try to make this one as small as possible. Okay. 
Uh, those equipment are very expensive. Even for example, one keyboard is like a thousand dollars. So the only thing is we want here is reduce the uh, resistivity. So if we have an inductor here, and in addition to the inductance, we are going to have an equivalent uh, resistance. Uh, the equivalent resistance can be calculated by also right by that uh, two times L over A. Uh, tie up with the inductors. Uh, common symbols for inductors. Uh, inductors. Do you still remember how uh, the, the, the symbols for capacitors? The symbol, yeah, in the, in the, in the uh, circuit diagram, what is, what, what is the eh, two parallel with the with wire, right? Yeah. Uh, right? That's the symbol for that. Uh, right, so I'll give you the PCB, for, for example, I'll give you a circuit diagram, you need to which one is which, all the <coughs> symbols, right? Uh, capacitor looks like this, right? Or oh, sometimes they have positive negative, that means this is uh, Polarized. Right. Right. Then what is the res uh, inductor? Inductor is just this one, draw it like this, like a coil. Right. How about the resistance? Just like solid. Yeah. Huh? Uh, similar to this, right? Yeah, like solid. Okay, resistance uh, like this. Huh? But uh, when I was a student, little I learned this, it's not like this. I used it like this. Like yeah, this. like this. Yeah. Like this too. You use this too, right? All right. Uh, in here, still some books like use this, but I think more textbooks use this one. But if you see this, I it's still dark. Huh? Lost. But anyway, on the fuse, there's something like a, something inside, like a, uh, the fuse. What, what is the fuse? Anyone knows the physical structure for a fuse? It's just a really. Sometimes you need to re replace the fuse in your, in your car, right? Your light, your, your headlight is not working. What is it is, uh, first of all, we have a uh, URA <coughs> glass, like, uh, like this yeah. one. Yeah. Right? And this one here is, uh, is a seal or something. Yeah. And we have a cable running through. Okay, we sometimes, this is just a metal here. Yeah. And there's a keyboard inside. Yeah. This keyboard is uh, like a very thin, thinner than, than this part. So if your current passing through this fuse is larger enough, then this one will break, break melt, the and then will protect your circuit. Yeah. So that's why it looks like there's something. How to draw this? That's a, like this? How do you know this? You, 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 you did the homework on this. Uh, to parallel something? But I forget, okay, so. Like this, right? Make sure you know this, huh? You are the one who is going to take the test. All right. Uh, there are different uh, types of inductors. Okay, they have like um, what's that? In parallel on top, and this one different. Okay, definitely the last one is a variable inductor, right? Nickel core, iron core, uh, ferrite core, and variable. Right? Okay. How to calculate the induct? We know how to calculate the capacitance, right? Right? Let's let me ask. How to calculate the capacitance? C equals uh, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 1, 8, 5 times uh, 10 to the negative tau times, times uh, A, A over D. A over D. A over D. Right? Now this one is used to calculate the inductance. Right? So you just memorize the this is n squared. What is n? n is the number of turns in the coil. Right? So if you have, as I said, if you have just the speed wire, then n equals one. Right? If you have a one core, uh, one turn. If you have ten turns, then n equals ten. Right? What is micro? That is mu. That is called mu. Is the permeability of the material inside the coil. Right? And uh, the mu, uh, usually, we can just use the mu in the free space. Uh, that is different than the dielectric. Dielectric constant, different material have a different, different uh, dielectric constant. But uh, the mu, except the ferrite material, 
Fast mu is very large. All other material, for example, here, here, everything, almost equal to the free space. Right? So, but anyway, that's mu, we still use a mu r times mu zero. Uh, that is a squared r equals times mu times uh, uh, a over l, and this mu is a mu r times mu zero. What is mu zero? It is the last last time because uh, four pi times ten to negative seven. If I remember this correct, okay. Don't take this for granted. You need to check by yourself. I remember it's like this. This is uh, the permeability for vacuum or free space. And uh, this mu r is the permeability of that material. For example, if you have coils and inside you have some, some bars or something, that is this. But this r is relativity. So that mu divided by this is this mu r. Okay? So that mu equals this times this. If you are given like this, you need to multiply by this. If you are given only this, then you just use this. Does that make sense? And A, what is A? You guess. The area of the wire. The cross section, right? The cross section, right? If you have wires like this, then it may be, I guess, it's clear, right? Yeah, the, the cross section. Right? L is a. Uh, L is the length of the whole. Is the length of the. Also, right? the entire the length of the wire. Okay, right, let's see. This is correct. Number of turns, uh, permeability, coil oh, length right. on meters. Okay. What is A? In this class, A. Area. Area. It's a partial square. Okay, so here, and it's good. We have an example. Right. What is the inductance of a 2 cm long, 150 turn coil wrapped in a low carbon steel core that is, uh, uh, see, this is a cross section. And the area of the cross section. The permeability equals uh, uh, 2.5 times 10 to negative 4. <coughs> First, I calculate the area of the cross section, pi times r squared, r. So the diameter equals uh, 0 0.5, so the radius equals uh, 0 0.25. But that is a centimeter, so we need to convert that into a meter. So that will be equal zero point zero zero two five meter. That is the radius. Then pi radius squared gives us the uh, the area A, which is the the area of the cross section. Then a squared a equals uh, what is n here? One fifty. Uh, what is n? N is 150. 150, okay. What is mu? Permeability? Because 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4. You need to make sure all the units are already in standard. So this H Henry per meter. So that is good, right? Yeah. Then times A. A is a square meter. That's also good. L. What is L? 2 centimeter. So we need to use a 0 0.02. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Right. So we plug all the numbers here. Okay. The result will be the if you plug all the numbers here, you calculate the result. What is the unit? <coughs> the unit of the inductance is Henry. Right? Is H. But this looks like 0. Point something small, then you convert this into a milli Henry. Make sense? Yeah. A typical value for an inductor, for inductance is uh, the unit is a uh, milli, milli Henry, mH. What's the typical for the capacitance? Uh, micro, micro and uh, pico. Uh, but this one is a little bit larger than the value, so it's uh, usually is milli. Again, Henry is very large, or uh, kind of very large compared to this. Henry is a large unit, so we use a mini. We just do this top part and then divide. Uh, practical inductors, you are going to see a lot of uh, inductors. I have a big one in my office from some like a transformer. It's very heavy to bring here. 
Transformers were really fast. If you want to take a look, you can go to my office. <laughs> we can help you there. I think I'm maybe 10 pounds or something. Alright, we're here. Uh, series inductions. Right? Uh, I give you two uh, inductions in series. What is the total? <laughs> Let's guess. What is the total? In the series, So let's see. We know the resistors, right? Yeah. We know the capacitors are opposite than, than the yeah. resistors. So inductors. You see, is it similar to resistor or similar to capacitor? Uh, similar to resistor. You can see the inductance, the formula for the inductance is L over is related to L. Uh, so, that's, uh, so that means if you have a 2, 10 milli Henry's in series, what is the total is 20, right? Yeah. If they are in parallel, 5. five. So that's just like a resistor. So don't confuse. Capacitor is opposite to resistor. And inductor is similar to resistor. Inductor is opposite to capacitor. Yes, that is correct. Eh? Peter, this is in series or in parallel? Series. Series. In series. Eh? So one is you just add up together, right? And uh, in parallel, how to do this? One over, one over, plus one over, plus one over. Okay. Order product. See, look at this. Right? If you have more, just use the. Uh, what about the product over sum? Uh, if you have two, then we are using product divided, divided by the sum. And these two, again, multiply, then divided by the sum. And uh, you need to, before you use that formula, you need to make sure. The unit will be the same. Eh? Otherwise, you'll be, you have a wrong result. It's 0 0.68. Right? Uh, inductors. In general, what is inductor? Inductor is just any conductor. Any conductor. Right? But the unit will make this uh, more effective. That means the conductor is larger, so we make this a coil. And even better, we put some coil inside. All these practices are just making the inductance large. Uh, sometimes you want in, your inductance to be as small as possible. For example, you design a circuit, right? The circuit for your phone. Right? You do not want to have extra inductance. What you do is uh, you do not make them uh, like a coil. You want to make them as straight, as straight as possible. Right? So it depends on what you want. So you can use different techniques. Uh, winding induced voltage inductance. Okay, inductance. Remember inductance. <coughs> and uh, Henry, what is Henry? The unit of the unit of inductance. Of inductance. Is this small or large? Large. Large. Right? Okay. So that's why we use. You already use the M. M. R L time constant, just like R C constant. We don't discuss here. Inductive uh, reactance quality factor. It's Q. Uh, you cause the energy stored divided by the energy dissipated, but again, you don't discuss here. Uh, uh, you may have time to do this. Assume color are the same. The inductance of the inductor will be larger if. Uh, which one? Uh, Wait, all. Assuming all of the factors are the same. You need to recall the formula for the inductance. More turns are added. More turns. A. 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 No more? B. A. A. Wait, all of them. It's all of them. All of them, right? Yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, I'll ask you. No more? Yeah. Consider a single more. Oh, all, all, all of them, right? Henry is defined the inductance for quite well. Okay, so you, you the symbol for the for right. D. For ferrite. Maybe D. Okay. D. Symbol for variable. This one is it. C. C. The total of this in a series. How to do this? The total inductance. 
Add them together. Add them together. So it's 1.4. In parallel, how to do this? D. Just one over, one over, plus one over, or error. Or further over some. We have two here, so just multiply and then divide it by the sum. Oh, it's connected to a series, series, series. Okay, so we don't discuss this. This is what you saw. Time constant. Time constant is equals L O R again. We don't discuss what or this. Square root. Okay, we don't discuss this. Okay, we don't. Okay, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, everybody sign this? Yes. <laughs> 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 